Hello friends, my name is Ankit Khare. Today, I'm going to present my project on a very exciting topic, identifying empty parking spaces in a car parking. I'll start with some flowcharts and block diagrams. So this is what I've been doing since I got the topic, researching and exploring, reading papers, referring to codes, and seeing what has been done already. After I was clear on what I have to do, I started training the hard classifier. Next, I used the Laplacian um, operator to see how it works in conjunction with the classifier. Next, on the advice of professor, I incorporated some motion tracking algorithms to see how it improves the accuracy. Finally, when I was convinced that all these three things are working fine, I tested them on four parking lots, different ones. Then I measured the accuracy of the system further and documented them. Now I'm here presenting all this to you guys. So this is how the system looks like. But I'll first go through the program and then I'll come back to this and it will be more clear in this manner. But before that, I, I want to share these experimental results with you. Initially, these number of positives and ne negatives when tested on five frames in different conditions. Let me show you. So early morning, afternoon, evening. Okay. The accuracy was pretty low, but I increased the number of positives and negatives on those same frames I got this accuracy for the Laplacian threshold 1.5 54 mismatches then 120 cars were observed in one frame and then again 2.8 was the best with 19 mismatches so finally with 2.8 in my classifier this one I have 69% accuracy Okay, so let's start with our main code, the cool stuff. <laughs> uh, let's not save the video. Classifier is being used. I need to show the IDs. Threshold is fine. Motion is detected on this area of 500. Okay, everything seems to be set. Uh, okay, the initial parking lot that professor gave me. My YAML is this, in which I've marked every point that I need to see and observe. Classifier is the latest one. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so starting from frame 1, these are the full number of frames now. So this car is moving on 56, the status will change soon. Okay, you can see accuracy even the far away points are getting measured to the to a to a level of accuracy okay so this changed we can skip pressing u key 500 frames and then again 500 i pressed it twice so this car is coming this is not gonna be parked Okay, there is a mismatch. There is not, there is not. Okay. So, you can see the last change is also getting recorded. And, well, uh -huh. this is the overall motion tracking. But in these spaces, the motion is being tracked after the classifier says that, okay, there's a mismatch between the Laplacian detection and the classifier's result. So here, it gives this point to that new list. And when the new list is formed, the motion is detected on those new lists. Okay, so you see the result changed. Now let's see some more cool stuff. 
So our video ended here. Okay, let's see the classifier, how it behaves on different videos. So this was my initial classifier. Mm -hmm. This was the current one, which I used for the previous video, my main video. You can see there's a remarkable difference. This is M6 British Highway, one of the busiest in the world. This is the application of initial classifier. Now this is the improved one. Okay, so now I have shown you how my classifier has improved. I'll share with you the accuracy measures. So this is the initial one, 17.84%. This is the final one. These are the number of vehicles detected. Those five frames that I showed you earlier. And I have assumed that the classification was correct by the classifier. So with this assumption, it was 60.45% on those five frames. Okay, now um, let's go through something which I call as real-time boxing. And let's include some other parking this time. Okay, everything is correctly configured. Okay, so here I go. This is an empty ammo file which I'm using. Let's mark this point. This point. Okay. Let's check or double check, <laughs> cross verification. Okay, so these points are getting displayed. And now, I'll check the threshold value for this current video that I, that is associated with the frame that I showed you. Second, okay, it is test video three. And the image, Two. REMO is correct. Okay, everything seems to be fine. Run it. So you see, 2.87. 2.8 seems to be a correct value for this. 2.8. But I'm considering only two points, which is not good actually. So I'll con consider more. Let's say, um, before that, I'll show you something. Hmm. Okay, here. Classifier latest. YAML, the second one, which we just used, this one. Video. This one. Time to go. Yep. Let's skip some frames. Okay, there's a car status changed. Okay, now it's moving. It changed. Okay. So it's working fine. Okay. Now I'll change this to suppose 2000. And here I'll change this to one, two seconds. 1000, let's say. 
And now again, I run. Okay, the guy comes, the car will move. So it will change. Okay, so you saw it didn't change this time because the car didn't stay. There is a minimum waiting time of two seconds that I just mentioned here. If it waits, then only the status will change. It will check. It will keep on checking for two seconds in the status. If it remains same, then only it will change. Okay. So now let's apply my other YAML file, which is card, which has around 20 points. YAML 3 on the same video. But before that, let's calculate the threshold. I earlier calculated, but it was rough because of only two points. Okay. So this is the program for calculation of threshold. I'll use my second YAML card. And I'll calculate it. So it comes out to be nearly 2.4 and the median is 2.37. So that's the best threshold. Mm, let's change the threshold here to 2.4 and our new YAML which is per having 20 points the video remains same and see what happens okay so you see only one incorrect classification the guy comes moves the car come on okay don't make us wait. Mm. It will change. Yeah. Okay. It didn't wait. It didn't wait for so long. Okay, so it's working nice, nicely, with our calculated threshold. So what I did was just calculated the mean and median for the Laplacian, taking into consideration all those points, seeing how smooth they were, or they had heavy edges. So that's how I calculated the threshold. Now let's move on to one last thing that I wanted to show you. Um, it's hectic. That's why I wrote to just mark all those points manually. So that's why this real-time boxing thing becomes very handy where I'm maintaining a YAML file and then using it. So for this, there's this utility, um, auto hotkey, which many of you might be using. You can just enter the script and do the cropping things. So I'll not go deeper into this, but you can use them 
by using an Irfan View 64 it's very easy to crop for example I have this frame I select this car and I will use the shortcut key of the script which is control s and it's saved and done you can see here and I can show you some more images that I have for my training which is pretty interesting this is how the training looks like after 1.5 hours and then after 3 hours 18 minutes when it completes so okay so in the beginning I, I said it will be clear it will make more sense if I explain this later on so that's what I'm gonna do now as promised okay so force the system drop contours apply threshold thresholds initially changes the status to the right ones and then calls the classifier which modifies the status in case there's a change I mean if there's a detection that is not in compliance with the Laplacian threshold then the classifier changes it and then calls the motion tracking algorithm that hey hey motion please detect the motion on these areas which I'm giving you as a list and do let me know if you detect anything so the motion detection says yeah sure why not and then when it finds any kind of motion in those areas it says okay this is what I found take it and the classifier says thanks give it gives it back to classifies those areas and then changes the status so this process gave that amount of accuracy which I just shared with you and this is how the program works if you want to delve deeper into the code I have uploaded it on the github and I'm gonna upload the demonstration video on YouTube if you like it then just remember to please like it like that like button just hit it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel for further cool stuff like this so in conclusion I would just like to say uh, I'm thankful to my professor for assigning me such a wonderful topic and it's been nice really amazing experience to start to keep working on this to to work on this project and I'll keep updating it I have plans for the future like to introduce some convol convolution neural network classifier for further increasing the efficiency of the classifier so that's all I have for today and keep liking, keep sharing, have a nice day. Thank you.